Please do remember that if you're in the depth of a deep, dark depression, that may mean you can only take just the little tiny steps, just one at a time. So don't get overwhelmed by all of the things I'm going to talk about. Maybe just choose one and work on just that one thing. And don't take another step until you're really ready. First, get up and get dressed. So shower and dress every day, even if you don't feel like it. Showering and dressing, not staying in your PJs all day long, not having makeup all over your face from the day before, that takes away all your excuses. If you're wearing your PJs and you're hanging around in bed, it's really difficult to do all the other things I'm going to talk about today. It's hard to stay motivated to do anything. So get up, get dressed, get showered every day. Go outside. One of the things that the research shows really clearly is that we need exposure to sunlight and that interaction with nature, with growing things, has a positive effect on our mood and diminishes anxiety. We need to be connected with nature. If you can't actually physically get outside, get near a window where you can see trees and grass and sky and you can see growing things and get sunlight on your face. If you can't do that, then look at pictures in a book, look at film, anything that gets your brain stimulated and thinking about nature and sunlight. But the best thing is to get physically outside every day. Drink water. Drink water as opposed to other things, sodas and juices and all of that. There's so many fancy ways to get fancy water. Um, you know, you can pay lots of money for water. Don't do that, just drink water, lots of water. We're probably all dehydrated all of the time. Carry around giant things of water like this and drink water all day long. Eat lots of plants. So focus a lot more on eating plants than other things. Fruits and vegetables will improve your mood, improve your energy level, improve your sleep, and diminish some of the negative effects of, of the processed foods and the sugars and the carbohydrates that we tend to overload on. So eat lots of plants. Try journaling. There are lots of reasons for journaling. Journaling provides a space for your thoughts and feelings. It forces you to reflect on what's going on inside of you. It helps relieve the tension of keeping secrets, even if you're only telling yourself those secrets. Try to learn something about bullet journaling. I think that that's very helpful. We'll do another video about that in the future. Consider tracking your mood triggers for your depression, things that relieve your depression. You can write a journal about anything you want. You can write it any way you want. You can write it in a, in a leather bound uh, manual, something you're going to keep forever, or you can write pages and you can burn them and throw them away. It doesn't matter. It's about the process. It's not about the product. Try some exercise. Exercise daily is absolutely beneficial to mood. That's been shown over and over again in the literature and the research. We know that exercise releases endorphins and endorphins are those feel good chemicals in your body. They have a positive impact on your brain and on your mood. A little teeny bit of exercise, meaning minutes, certainly 30 minutes is really good, but even less than that has a positive impact for the next 24 hours on your mood. So it will reduce your stress. It, it will release negative emotions, anger, frustration. For some people, it's even a chance to work through complicated issues and thoughts and help their body and their mind relax. Of course, it's good for your physical health and for longevity and all of those good things. We were not built as human animals to sit around in one spot 
and not move. And unfortunately, daily life has led us to do a lot of that. So get moving, try some exercise, start with whatever you can tolerate. If it's 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, one minute a day, start with that. Do whatever you can and be okay with that. Find laughter. Sometimes, no matter how bad we feel, if we can find laughter in a book, in a joke, in a movie, in in any kind, in watching a comic, in laughing with a friend, a little bit of laughter goes a long way in terms of improving our mood. Develop a very simple daily routine, a simple morning routine, and a simple nightly routine that we stick to every day but don't obsess about can be very helpful to establishing positive mood. We are creatures of habit and we do really well when we have regular predictable routines. Make time for hobbies particularly reading. There have been a lot of studies done looking at reading and people who read an hour a day tend to feel happier and more fulfilled. So intellectual activity on a daily basis is very, very fulfilling. But whatever it is that you do, make time for those things that you enjoy at least on a weekly basis. Try to stay away from things like television. Television isn't a hobby, but stay away from it. It tends to be negative and even can be more depressing. Consider yoga. There's a reason yoga has been around for millennium. Um, it has beneficial effects far beyond the physical, it seems to affect the body and the mind and has positive effects in terms of alleviating anxiety and improving mood. Practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is simply learning to be aware, aware of what's going on with you personally, what you are experiencing, what's going on with you internally. There are lots of ways to practice mindfulness throughout your day. You can sit quietly in the morning before starting your day and simply focus on your breath. You can eat mindfully. Lots of people eat while watching television or scrolling through their phone or reading a newspaper. Instead, pay attention to what you're eating. Really notice what it tastes like, what it smells like. Sit outside mindfully. Be aware of the surroundings and the smells, what you're seeing. Meditate. Learn to meditate. That takes practice, but meditation is really connecting with your mind. So it's something worthwhile to think about learning more about. Feel what you're feeling when you're feeling it is mindfulness. Focus on one task at a time. We tend to get really distracted with multitasking. Instead, learning how to do one thing at a time and put it aside and move on to the next is a type of mindfulness that can go a long way in terms of diminishing depression. Maintain and nurture your social connections. This one is critical. We are not animals of isolation. We are social creatures. We are built to live together in groups and we are built to survive that way. We need those connections. Depression causes us to want to be isolated and to stay alone and not connect with others and we need to do the exact opposite. It's really important that we reach out to others, that we stay in contact, that we talk with others and that we see other human beings. So maintain the contact with loved ones and with relatives. The more depressed you are, the more you need that contact. 
Social interactions are more strongly correlated with overall well-being and happiness than wealth, possessions, status, or pretty much any other happiness factor. Know what triggers your depression and know what makes you feel better. So again, that harkens back to journaling. It can be really helpful to keep a journal during a particularly a period of depression and know what it is that triggers you to fall into these periods of depression so that you can have some better control over that aspect of your life. Practice gratitude. Again, journaling gratitude is very helpful. Every morning, write down some things that you are grateful for. It's even helpful to do this twice a day. It takes 30 seconds to write down a handful of things you're grateful for in the morning and at night. Gratitude can be small, the softness of your puppy's ears, a cup of coffee, or it can be really big, your health, your children, life. It doesn't matter, and it can be different every day. It can be the same things. It's whatever you want it to be. The point is that gratitude it's very difficult to be grateful and resentful at the same time resentful is toxic and it breeds a lot of depression and unhappiness practice gratitude one minute review do a one minute positive review of your day just before you go to sleep choose one thing that you think went well and examine the way in which you participated in making it happen. Don't go to sleep until you have that thought in your head. It can be something really tiny, it doesn't matter, or it can be something really big that you did. Perhaps you're feeling really awful and you're not able to accomplish a long to-do list that you've got or you're feeling badly about some other pile of work that you'd like to get done, but you spent 10 minutes scratching your dog's belly and made your dog really happy. That actually happened to me. Um, you put that thought in your head that you spent this amount of time with your creature who loves you very much and the two of you enjoyed it and that went well. And your part in it was that you cared for and loved this dog and it was a positive experience and it went well. This is a tiny thing, but that's the thought that you keep in your head. That is your one minute review at the end of the day. And it's important to focus on that. Our brains will not focus on that. Our brains will focus on the negative and the scary rather than focusing on the positive. And so we need to collect those moments and give them the time they deserve on purpose and with intent. If we do that, we will reap the rewards over time. So do a one minute, re so do a one minute review each night right before you go to sleep. Pay attention to your sleep and practice good sleep hygiene. We won't go into good sleep hygiene in this video. I've done it in other videos, but practice good sleep hygiene. Almost everybody with depression has significant sleep problems. So don't beat yourself up for having sleep problems. Just do the best you can. In the evening, sleep when you're tired. Wake up when you're no longer tired. Do it every day. Do it at the same time. Try not to take naps. Learn to not use an alarm over time. And we'll talk about that more later. And finally, here it is. Here's a review. And remember, if you're deep, dark, in a depression, you choose one thing, just one, and you try just a little bit of it. This is a lot, all of this, but these are all just suggestions, things that you can do that don't require that you've found a 
somebody to help you professionally yet. Get up, showered, and dressed every day. Go outside. You need sun. You need growing things. Drink water. Eat plants. Journal. Exercise, even if it's only for a few minutes. Develop a daily routine, something in the morning and something at night. Take time for your hobbies at least once a week. Read. Consider yoga. Practice mindfulness. Maintain your social connections, friends and loved ones. You need them. Know your triggers. Practice gratitude. Do your one minute review and sleep. Okay, that's it for today. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. And I'm Dr. Wendla. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.